Hi, I'm Pei Pei. Narita Airport is the gateway to the skies of Japan. In the previous tour, I introduced a dormitory hotel that was renovated from the old abandoned school building, which is recommended for transit stays at Narita Airport. This time, I'd like to share with you the sightseeing attractions of Narita City, where Narita Airport is located. Narita is home to one of the largest and most famous temples in Japan, Narita San Shinshoji Temple. On our way to visit the temple, I recommend taking a tour of a pathway to the temple where you can enjoy the delicious food and interesting culture of Japan. It would be a shame to think that Narita Airport is just a place to get on and off planes and then go on to another destination. We are off on a tour full of attractions that will make you want to include sightseeing in Narita into your travel schedule. There are two ways to get to Narita Airport by train from Tokyo. The KC line and the JR line. And the Narita station for each line is just before the Narita Airport station. The KC and the JR lines are very close to each other and the center of the city is spread out between the two stations. In front of the JR station, a tourist information center is available here. It has English guidebooks for tourist facilities in the suburbs of Narita, so you can gather information here and decide on your sightseeing route. So let's finally start from the square in front of the station and head towards our destination, Narita San Shinshoji Temple, through the 800 meter long pathway. The straight pathway leading to Shinshoji Temple starts right next to the square in front of the station. There are many attractive stores along both sides of the pathway, so time may fly by if you go door to door. Many of the stores have recently been revealed and cleaned up, but you can still see the traditional Japanese culture in the signs and designs. This store sells products made from peanuts, a specialty of Chiba Prefecture where Narita City is located. This store has a variety of Unari-kun goods, a cute mascot character of Narita City. This character is a combination of eel, a specialty of the pathway to Shinshoji Temple, and an airplane. It won the Grand Prix Prize for mascot characters in 2017. A little further on, there is a path that is crowded with tourists from abroad at night. Further down is the only sake brewery on the pathway, Chomeisen. The brewery was founded over 150 years ago at the beginning of the Meiji era and the sake brewing takes place just behind the store. The water from the well here was so delicious that it was reputed to have cured illnesses, and the sake made from it was named Chomeisen, meaning longevity water. It became a very popular souvenir for visitors to Narita-san. A tasting of a glass of sake is also available, so sake lovers can enjoy their drink in the middle of the day. Further on, there is a product exhibition featuring Chiba Prefecture's local specialties. You can find the Unari-kun goods I mentioned earlier, as well as snacks and sweets that are easy to buy and make great souvenirs. About halfway along the pathway is the most famous store on the pathway, Yonea which sell Japanese sweets. The specialty of this 120-year-old store is Kuri Yokan, 
which was invented based on the vegetarian cuisine of Shinshoji Temple. It is a very popular product that has been featured on many TV programs, so if you go there too late, it might be sold out. Another popular item recently is a peanuts monaka, which is made from peanuts, a specialty of Chiba Prefecture. The packaging is cute, and the product is light and lasts a long time, making it a perfect souvenir. At the back of the store, there's an exhibition hall with more highlights. Inside, there are many illustrations of kabuki, a traditional Japanese performing art that is popular among foreigners. There is a deep connection between Narita-san Shinshoji Temple and Kabuki. Danjuro Ichikawa, a popular Kabuki actor in the Edo period, visited Narita-san to pray for an heir and was blessed with a child. Also, when he performed a Kabuki play with the Fudo-san at Narita-san as the stage, it became very popular in Edo and many people began to visit Narita for leisure. Because of this history, there is a still a deep connection between Kabuki and Narita-san, and the Kabuki actors visit Narita-san for seasonal events every year. It's fun to see the history of Narita-san, and also to see the retro Japanese tools. On the second floor, there's an exhibition where you can learn about the history and tools used to make yokan. These exhibits are free of charge, so please visit when you have time. Before entering the main street of the pathway, let's stop at an antenna store of a famous dairy farm in Chiba and have a delicious whippy ice cream made from fresh milk. The descent from here is a main street and is lined with historic stores on both sides of the Lord. The pathway to the temple still retains the traditional atmosphere, so you can fully enjoy the sightseeing. One of the most eye-catching buildings is this particularly large one Ryokan Onoya. It was established as an inn in the mid-Edo period and is said to have operated as a candle shop before that. The pleasant building built in 1935 is three-story high with a watchtower on the roof. Today, it is not an inn but a restaurant where you can enjoy meals and coffee. But the building has been preserved for its value as a cultural heritage. After visiting the charming stores along the pathway, a magnificent gate comes into view. It's the entrance of Narita-san Shinshoji Temple. Narita-san is a Buddhist temple of the Shingon sect and is said to have been founded in 940 in the middle of the Heian period. It is one of the most famous temples in Japan, boasting the second largest number of visitors in Japan after Meiji Shrine, with over 3 million people visiting the temple every New Year's Day. The temple is also famous for its many seasonal events throughout the year, and is always crowded with people. Entering from the main gate, there is a main hall and many more structures to see, including a vast garden and woods in the back. Once you pass through the gate, you'll be amazed by the magnificent scenery of a Japanese temple. After going up the stairs, you'll arrive at the Nyomon Gate, 
with magnificent decorations and huge red lantern hanging from it. Look up at the decorations and designs and observe them up close. Further down the path, a steep staircase awaits you. After climbing the stairs, you'll finally arrive at the main hall of Shinshoji Temple. This huge square and the size of the main hall reveal how popular and powerful Shinshoji Temple is. The splendid three-story pagoda is also a sight to behold with its cool decorations. Once you enter the main hall, you'll see a constant stream of people praying. It's not allowed to take pictures of the sanctuary at the back end of the main hall, but why don't you go inside and feel a special atmosphere? Also, Narita-san sells a variety of charms to fulfill your wishes, such as traffic safety, protection from evil, and success in school. And there are even omikuji vending machines. There are also some written in English, so why not try fortune telling at Narita-san as a memento of your trip? After paying your respects on the main hall, let's go up the stairs to find an even rare sightseeing spot marked by this sign that says Shusse Inari. This is a Shusse Inari good luck shrine. At the entrance of the shrine, there are fried tofu made of soybeans and fox figurines for sale. It is said that Fried tofu is a favorite food of the fox enshrined in Inari shrines, so the fried tofu is offered as an offering to the fox. Let's go inside with the offerings purified by striking flints to ward off bad luck. The beautiful, mysterious, and attractive space has an oriental atmosphere with brilliant colors of vermilion gold, blue, and green. And then, everyone makes an offering to the main deity and wish for success in life. It's a very Japanese way of praying, and it's a really interesting experience. Now, there are many more things to see at Narita-san. There is a building decorated with signs and picture frames that are said to have been dedicated by Ichikawa family, the kabuki actors I mentioned earlier. And the huge red pagoda that was built for peace. There is a lot of greenery and nature left here, including a waterfall in the forest where you can enjoy bathing in nature. There is a huge garden with plum blossoms blooming all over in the springtime, and you can enjoy the changes in nature from season to season. The temple, which has been around since the Edo period, is not only an object of worship, but also functions as a major amusement facility with the stores along the pathway, and its charm continues to entertain visitors to this day. Now, for the finale of the Narita-san tour, let's finally go and eat eel, a very popular gourmet food. There is an area lined with eel shops, and this time I chose Omiya.
smell of the eel being grilled over charcoal in front of the store allured me into the store. Since the Edo period, the eel has been popular as a tonic food, and Narita has been serving the eel from the nearby Lake Imba to many worshippers, and it has taken root as a very popular specialty. Nowadays, eel is procured from all over Japan, but Narita is still so famous that everyone think of eel when you mention Narita. After waiting while thinking about the history of Narita and eel, the eel pile finally arrived. It cost over 3,000 yen, so it's a bit of luxurious meal, but I guarantee you it's worth it. The combination of the soft fluffy eel with the sweet and spicy sauce and the rice is just perfect. You should end your tour with the best eel to soothe your fatigue after you visit the shrine. So how was your sightseeing tour of Narita? Right next to Narita Airport, there's a place where you can experience such retro Japanese scenery and culture. It would be a shame to use Narita Airport and pass it by without doing some sightseeing in Narita City.